Welcome to McCullough Christian Center's broadcast today. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.purposemcc.com. Hallelujah. So if you're not standing already, go ahead and stand with us and take your Bible and turn with, with me, please, to the book of John. The book of John, chapter 11. As you stand in honor to the reading of God's Word. Hallelujah. John, chapter 11. And I'm not going to read this whole story on the story of Lazarus, but I I do want to kind of pinpoint one area that Holy Spirit dealt with me about that I want to share this morning. And I really believe today that this is a word for people that are here this morning. But I want to talk to you this morning on the subject of being unbound, unbound. Is that grammatically correct? I don't know. But if you're unbound, you're not bound anymore. Amen? If you're unbound means that you were bound, but you're not bound anymore. Amen. John chapter 11, verse 43, and when he thus had spoken, talking about Jesus, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Can you imagine being there that day, standing there? Can you imagine that? I do, I do a lot of work in the cemetery, and there's not a time that I'm in the cemetery that I don't have this thought in my mind. What is it going to be when one of these days, when the trumpet sounds and the Bible says the dead in Christ are going to rise first? What's it going to be like one of these days You see those granite monuments and all those granite stones that weigh thousands and thousands of pounds. Just move to the side. When God gets ready to get his, there's no stone that can hold him back. Amen. But my, what it must have been that day when Jesus uttered those words, Lazarus come forth. Verse 44, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. I want you to notice the sequence of events in this story. And we're gonna, I'm going to catch you up on it a little bit more in a little bit. But I want you to notice this passage. Jesus stood before the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead several days. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that uh, one of his sisters says, Lord, he probably is smelling by now. Probably decomposure had already begun to take place with Lazarus' body. But Jesus stood before his tomb and uttered three words, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says that the dead man came forth, but he was bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Father, 
Thank you today for your word. Thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see. Thank you for hearts that are open, even right now, Holy Spirit, for this word that's going to set us free, that's going to bring healing and hope into our lives today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to I want to talk to you this morning on the subject of being unbound. Now, if you will uh, go up to verse twenty one in John chapter eleven, and in verse twenty one of John chapter eleven, Jesus is in conversation with Martha, who was Lazarus' sister. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord. If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, and I want you to notice these words, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. He didn't stop there. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I've never noticed that like I noticed it earlier. Jesus didn't stop at saying, I am the resurrection. But he went on and he said, I am not only the resurrection, but I am also the life. Meaning, I believe that there is a resurrection, and the word resurrection simply means a bringing back to life. It means a raising up from dead and restoring one back upright. It is a calling out of the dead place and raising one up. But life is another story. You see, life, the the word life there is the Greek word zoe or zoe. And the word zoe is the very essence of life. It is a word that that describes life and everything about what life is. It is your animation. It is your personality. It is your character. It is everything about who you are. Life is what moves you. It's what carries you along. It's what it's your creative ability. It's your gifting. It is, it is your, your calling. Everything is involved in this word life. Jesus said, Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the one that will raise up the dead. I am the one that will raise up that that is lying prostrate. He said, when I speak, I'm going to get them to stand upright. But he said, not only am I the one that will resurrect the dead, but I am the one that will give life to those that are resurrected. Now, you you need to understand what I'm saying here. I read this this passage of Scripture, and, and the Lord began to deal with me about Lazarus. You see, Lazarus came out of the grave and out of the tomb. And he came out wearing his grave clothes. He came out bound up. He came out bound up by what had caused his death. And I want you to get this picture. When Lazarus came out of the tomb, he didn't walk out in bright lights. And make a star study of the uh, 
appearance. I had a moment. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't glamorous and all of that. When Lazarus came out of the tomb, it was ugly. It probably smelled and all of that. Now, Jesus, being who he was and who he still is, had the ability and had the power that when he spoke and called Lazarus out of the tomb, he had the power to break the grave clothes off while Lazarus was still in the tomb. He had the power that when Lazarus made his grand appearance that he could have been polished up, shined up, dressed up, and ready to go to Sunday meeting. But Jesus didn't do that. And I believe that there's a picture that he wanted to show you and I. You see, Lazarus came out with his grave clothes. And grave clothes to you and I this morning could represent being spiritually dead. There are people this morning that God has called you out. You have experienced the resurrecting power of Jesus, but yet you're still walking around in your grave clothes. You're still bound up by the things that put you in the grave to start with. You see, what Jesus was saying to Martha was not only am I going to bring your brother out of the grave, but I'm going to give him the ability to walk in a life that goes beyond any kind of life he's ever experienced. So when I talk about grave clothes, I'm talking about clothes that represent death, spiritually, emotionally, and even physically. Most important, the grave clothes could represent your unbelief or your lack of growth. Still bound by the past. Still bound by unconcernedness. Still bound by a lack of understanding who the God is that resurrected you in the first place. Can I tell you something this morning, and I'm just going to go ahead and preach since y'all going to sit there and look at me kind of stoically. I'm going to go ahead and preach until you get a smile on your face. So when you say a loud and hearty amen, that let me know I can move on to the next place. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this morning that when Jesus died on the cross and the blood was shed on the cross of Calvary, it redeemed my life from destruction and, and set me free from the power of sin. But when he came out of the grave, he gave me power over death. He gave me power over the very thing that was killing my life. But listen to this. If Jesus had just called me out and I could just walk in the resurrected power I still wouldn't know the life that is in Jesus. But what Jesus did is he raised me up and said, now I'm going to give you the power and the ability to begin to live a life like you have never lived before. You see, but so many times people continue to walk and live in the past even though God has resurrected you. He brought you out. He saved you li your life. In other words, he brought you out of death's door. You were bound. You were bound with sin. Listen, I'm coming more and more to understand why and how people will make a start for Jesus, and then all of a sudden you see them slip away. 
I'm becoming more and more concerned about a generation of people, of young men, young ladies, old men, old ladies, that have made a start for Jesus. Maybe you signed a card somewhere. Maybe you belong to a particular church or a particular organization, and you think that everything's all right, but yet there is no life of God in you. Let me tell you something about the life of God. The life of God is what animates me. It is what makes me move and live and breathe and have my very being. It is the life of God that when I'm at my lowest point that God comes and moves in me and raises me up and empowers me to keep on going. It is the life of God that I have when I'm walking down the streets of Atmore or down the aisle in Walmart and somebody comes up and says I'm broken and I need prayer. It is the life of God that flows out of me. It is not because I was resurrected. That's got a lot to do with it but it's the life of God that comes out of me that goes out into a dead place and brings life to somebody else it's the life of God that causes me not to worry so much about what people think about me because the lost can never understand the life of God The lost will come to church on Easter Sunday and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ but still walk in deadness because they don't understand about the life of God. But when you get the life of God in you, you will know that you've got something in you that is worth giving to somebody else. Listen, Lazarus experienced resurrection. But true freedom comes through the process of getting untangled or unbound from your grave clothes. And I am convinced today that there are many people, perhaps some that are sitting here. Don't look at your neighbor because you'll think, well, he's talking to them. No, I'm talking to you. So just look straight ahead, and nobody will even know it. But I am convinced today that there are people that sit on church pews Sunday after Sunday, and the reason they're so mean, so honorary, and so ugly, I'm not talking about looks, The reason that they will cut you up in a heartbeat or wave at you with one finger on the road is because they had an experience where Jesus called them out of the tomb, but they're still bound by their grave clothes. Let me tell you something. I believe this is what led the Apostle Paul to say in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10 when he said this. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see, you can be called out of something and still be affected what you was called from a still be affected by what you were called out of. But the life that that Christ wants to give us this morning is not only does he want to call me out of something, he wants me to experience. Do you remember when Jesus said, I will give you life and life more abundantly? See, the word bound means to be in bonds. It means to be tied, wound up, fastened with chains, or to throw into chains. It is the same word that, that is used in the story of the woman. I think it's in Luke chapter 13 uh, where the woman came to Jesus uh, bound by a spirit of infirmity. In other words, she came to Jesus, and I, I, I get the picture in my mind that she was bound over like this. 
that everywhere she went, she went like this. Because the Bible says she had a spirit of infirmity on her. And so she was bound by that spirit of infirmity. She wasn't able to raise up. But the Bible says that Jesus saw this woman that had been bound for 18 years. And the Bible says that he looked at her and he said, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And the Bible says when he said those words, she straightened up. You see, she was bound by a spirit of infirmity. In other words, she had a demonic entity that had come and bound her up and, and, and she could not raise up because of this demonic influence over her life. Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And the Bible says she stood up. But the Bible also says that the religious crowd there began to mumble, grumble, and complain that Jesus Jesus had done messed up and done something wrong. And Jesus looked at him and said, Hey, ha, ha, this woman been bound for 18 years with this spirit of infirmity. He said, What is it that I can't loose her and set her free? You see, and I believe this morning that, that in one way there are still people that are bound. You're walking around and you look good on the outside. Can I, can I tell you something this morning? Makeup will hide a multitude of sins. You can put some good makeup on. You can fix yourself up. And it'll hide a multitude of sin. And it'll hide a multitude of really what's going on on the inside of you. Here's the thing. Jesus looked at Martha. And he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Here's what Holy Spirit spoke to me. And, and I, I've got the landing site is on the radar. Here's what Holy Spirit spoke to me earlier. He said, Satan is all away, always about putting a period at the end of a sentence. Satan is always about putting a question mark on something. But God said, I am about commas. I am about exclamation points. And here's what Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning that I want to tell somebody here today. When Martha looked at Jesus and said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. In other words, Jesus, if you had been here, we wouldn't be going through all this. But the Bible says that Jesus looked back at her and he said to her, your brother shall rise again at the last day. Notice, notice something, and I, and I got ahead of myself. Martha looked at Jesus and said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And in verse 22, she said this. She said, but I know, but I know. I like those words. But I know that even now, whatsoever you ask of God, God will give it. And here's what Holy Spirit spoke to me earlier. He said this. Look at the words, but I know. I'm reading this out of the King James Version. But I know has a comma after it. The Lord spoke to me this morning and said this. When Martha said, but I know, 
He said, I want you to tell somebody this morning, never put a period where God puts a comma. And never put a comma where God has put a period. You say, Pastor, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying this morning that there's somebody here today that the devil has come and said it's over. You've gone too far. You messed up too bad. God can't help you now. And the devil says there's a period at the end of your sentence. There's a period at the end of your health. There's a period at the end of your relationship. There's a period at the end of your children's lives or something like that. But God said, I want you to tell them this morning that they should never allow a period to be where I'm just making room for a comma. And God said, tell them that it ain't over yet, that I'm about to do something. He said, because I'm bringing a word this morning that I'm ready to get the grave clothes off of people. I'm ready to see people uh, stay step into their destiny. Lazarus, can I tell you something this morning? Jesus didn't call you out of the tomb and out of the grave just so you could parade around and say, I was dead yesterday, but I'm alive today. God called you out of the tomb to be a light and an example to other people. He called you out of the tomb. You need to get rid of your grave clothes. You need to lay down uh, the dead things that you were in the other day and put on some new clothes and begin to walk in the newness of the resurrected life that God's called you in. Can I tell you something even more this morning? The reason today that you're struggling because things are not happening around you and God's not doing what you feel like he's supposed to do and, and maybe you're not seeing that husband or that wife come to Jesus or those children come to Jesus. It could be that you're still wearing grave clothes and the stench and the smell of the grave clothes is causing people to say, I've got the same thing that you've got. I'm still walking in death. God is saying this morning, get Get rid of the grave clothes. Let the life of God begin to operate through you and you'll begin to see things happen in your family. I'm getting there. Listen to this. The reason that it's important, and, and I want you to notice, Jesus looked at somebody else and said, Loose him. From his grave clothes. In other words, Jesus looked at people and said, Loose him, set him free. Now, this is not in my message, but I just want to share it. Can I share it? The reason that you need the body of Christ is because God has got gifting in the body of Christ. To help you loose yourself from your grave clothes. If you pop into church once a month, then you're going to get once a month's worth of being loosed. But if you get in church and get connected, you say, oh, but you're a pastor. That's the reason you're talking about. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Because it's like children coming home to see daddy. I miss my kids when they're not here. So if you got a vacation coming up, cancel that thing. <laughs> I know I went too far. Listen. I believe the reason Jesus didn't take care of the grave clothes himself, Sister Ruth, is that Jesus wanted people who have the life in them. Now listen, don't, don't think I'm condemning you because you miss church, all right? That doesn't mean you're going to go to hell. I'm telling you, though, this morning, to experience the fullness of the life of Christ, 
You need to be around people that are full of life. Because it's those people. It might be, it might be a hug from somebody. It might be somebody to just walk up to you and say, you know what? I don't know what it is about you, but you've got the, the, the most awesome smile. You do it. I know. I'm watching. You can have the mully grubs and all that, and, and somebody say, you know what? You've got one of the greatest smiles, and all of a sudden, you're exposing that grill for all it is. One of our little foster girls, Ava, has got blue eyes, and Judy made the mistake here several weeks ago of saying, Ava, you sure do know how to use those blue eyes. And now, every time Ava gets in trouble, <laughs> look at these eyes. You see, I'm telling you, you need interaction with people that have life in them. Quit hanging around the graveyard. Quit hanging around the mortuary. Get around people that have the life of God in them because if you get around people that have the life of God in them, I guarantee you that it will rub off on you and it won't be long that you'll find yourself walking around with a skip and a dance and a joy that you didn't have. Why? Because you were around brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so that knew what it was to be resurrected and also knew what it was like to have the the life of Jesus flowing through them. Listen, the danger of not understanding and not growing and maturing in your relationship with God is this. In 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 19, Peter said this, for, for whatever overcomes a person... To that, he is enslaved. So to make that very plain and to explain it to you in Greek, it means that whatever overcomes a person, to that he's enslaved. That's the Greek meaning. For Listen, for if after they have escaped the defilements of the world... Through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Notice that. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. My advice for my life is I want to stay just as far away from what I used to be bound in as I can get. When I start smelling what I used to smell, I want to find something else to smell. You see, Lazarus had a smell when he came out of the tomb. And it was the smell of death. Sin brings forth death. The importance is this. Lazarus needed a change of clothes so that he wouldn't smell 
like he used to smell. Listen to this in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder or the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, Jesus spoke those words, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus spoke those words to Martha, and he said, I am the resurrection and the life. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and verse 12 that you probably know it by now too, that the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Word of God, Lazarus, come forth. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And the Bible goes on down and says that there neither is there any creature that is hidden from the eyes of him with whom we have to do because but everything is naked and open uh, to his eyes and it goes on down for we don't have a high priest that has not been touched by the feeling of our infirmities but he was in all points tempted like as you and I are but yet without sin therefore therefore let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. The Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. In other words, when you find your problem and you find the Word of God that speaks to your problem, then your problem has been dealt with. Listen, the Word of God is spoken and the Word of God is living. It is powerful and it will change your life. All right, I'm, I'm closing. I've got five more points. Whoo, yes. I want to give you this, and I'm going to close. And it's five steps to becoming unbound. Amen? Five steps to finding freedom. Five steps to getting rid of your grave clothes. So write it down if you can. Step one. Realize this, God already knows what has produced death in your life. He already knows. To save time, you can go to Hebrews 4 and verse 12 that I just read. His word has already seen it. Step two, recognize this. The cross, everybody say the cross. The cross is where life begins. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, When we were dead in our sins, Jesus forgave us, canceled out the written code that was against us, nailing it to the cross. It's kind of weird. You go to the cross to die, but it's also the place where you begin to live. That that brought death to Christ brought life to me. Number three, once you realize that, that God already knows what has been producing death in you, and once you come to the cross and bow before the cross of Calvary, the next thing that you need to do is you need to walk away from your grave. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 says this, forgetting what lies behind me and pressing toward, to what lies ahead of me. It was the Apostle Paul. 
He was the one that stood there the day and hold, held the coats of those that were stoning Stephen. He's the one that had imprisoned many, many Christians and even killed and murdered many people because of the gospel of Christ. Paul said, there come a time in my life where I had to forget the past and press on to the future. Out of all five of these steps, this is probably one of the hardest that you'll ever do. You've got to let go of the past. Let go of the past. Let go of your yesterday and realize that God has set, set you in a new day. Number four. You have got to understand the power of accepting forgiveness. And on the same token, you've got to understand the power of forgiving yourself, of being forgiven. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, Chapter 6, he said, if you refuse to forgive a brother, I can't forgive you. That's pretty big there. That's a pretty major deal. In other words, if you're holding something against me, <clears throat> bring me an offering and I'll forgive you. No. If you're holding something against me, You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. Can I speak to a wife that's here this morning that you're holding unforgiveness against your husband? You need to let it go because God can't bring healing to you until you let go of past offenses. There's sons and daughters that are sitting here this morning and you're holding unforgiveness against a parent because they messed up or something. Can I tell you something this morning? You can't move forward until you cut the ties of unforgiveness and begin to walk in forgiveness. I promise you if you will do that, I believe you'll see a turnaround even in their lives. We need to live out. Everybody say live it out. Live out forgiveness. Live it out. My dad used to tell me, son, always make sure that you keep your spirit sweet. And I'll move on. Step number five. Grow, grow, grow. Listen, Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse, I can't remember the verse, but in John chapter 14, Jesus said this. Worship team, you guys come. He said this. He was about to ascend back to the Father. Or he was going to the cross, but he was telling his disciples, he said, look, I'm, I'm fixing to go away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send Holy Spirit back to you, and he's going to comfort you and encourage you and strengthen you. But here's the words that Jesus used in speaking to his disciples. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as fatherless children. He said, I will come to you. That's pretty awesome. 
You say, Pastor, how, what does that have to do with my growth? It really has quite a lot to do with my growth. Because if I live my life like I don't have a daddy, then I'm going to be blown about with everything around and everything that comes along is going to affect my relationship with God. But if I realize this morning that God did not leave me as an orphan, I am a child of the living God. Years and years ago, I had a good friend. His name was Shorty. Shorty and I grew up together. Shorty had a voice like an angel. Could sing. And his name described his stature. He was a short guy. <clears throat> so everybody called him Shorty. And I remember so vividly that in church... Shorty would get up on Sunday morning a lot of times and he would sing this song. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King. And he would sing that over and over and over. And if I had known I was going to sing it this morning, I would have it in front of me and I'd sing it. But I can't remember the words. But I can remember those words that he would sing. I'm a child of the king. My father owns it all. He's over everything. There's not anything that my daddy hadn't touched. And there's not any problem that my daddy can't solve. He knows me as a son, and I know him as my father, Brother Carl. I'm a child of the living king. The sad thing about that is I watched this young man over the years that he would sing that song and then I watched him begin to drift. And I watched the beauty and the glory of God, that the gifting of God that God had on his life. I saw him begin to put on his grave clothes again. And I watched him as he drifted and he drifted got bound up with alcohol. And my friend lost his life. While he was drunk. But those words continue to resound in my ears. See, Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will be there. There is no greater knowledge, no greater understanding than to know that I have the life of Christ living inside of me, flowing through me, enabling me, empowering me to be an overcomer. Would you stand with me, please? Listen, please just give me just a few minutes, and I'm going to let you go. Please respect this time, this part of the service. Very quickly this morning, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you here today? And you say, Pastor, I'm still wearing grave clothes 
I've still got the past hanging on. I've still got the smell of the past in my life. I want to be loosed. I want to be set free. I want the life of Jesus flowing through me and operating in my life. If that's you.